What's going on, everybody? My name is Tamar Turner, and I'm the host of the Down to Business podcast, where the mission is to really provide exposure to businesses, entrepreneurs, and artists all around the world in their respective crafts. And we do so through audio and visual interviews where we come on and we talk about all things from getting into the business to most memorable moments to even some advice that you may give for other business owners and entrepreneurs out there. So if this sounds like something that you would be interested in, we'd love to have you on for an interview. Please be sure to reach out via any social media platform and we'll definitely get back to you. But until then, enjoy this episode. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Down to Business podcast here with Tamar Turner. And first and foremost, just wanted to give everybody a big shout out there. Give yourselves a big pat on the back. We officially did reach a thousand plays. So that was something that I was kind of celebrating throughout the week that um, I found out actually June 28th that we did it. So I'm uh, really excited for that. Really excited to really keep going, produce some more content. And hopefully by the time you guys hear this episode, I'll have another announcement for y'all. So like I said, definitely appreciate everybody been tuning in, been showing love, giving a lot of feedback. Big shout out to everybody who's come on, made it possible. So another person who I really want to give a big shout out to is my boy, Jordan, who I'm sitting down with today. And uh, somebody who I met through ECU, a lot of people I feel like I brought on here from ECU. I love it. I love that they're going on to do great things. But Jordan, is really going on to do a lot just in the time that I've known him and really just came on as somebody who was just like brother to me, somebody who even after me graduating, we still keep in contact and everything like that. And like I said, I'm really amazed at some of the things that he's doing and some of the things that he's coming on here to talk to you guys about. So Jordan, how are you feeling today, bro? I'm feeling great, man. How about you? I'm good, bro. Can't complain. And just to give everybody the full introduction, this is Jordan Rawlins. Some know him as Jordan, J. Raw, whatever you want to call him. So uh, what brings you on the podcast today, bro? What you coming to talk to us about and all the, all these endeavors you got going on? Right, right. Uh, many endeavors, but today we're going to talk about three, three of the five, I'll say. Um, first and foremost, I started a fitness page, a fitness company, I'll say. Um, it's called Rawlings underscore SSPT on Instagram. The goal of that really, I wanted, I wanted to be different. And we're looking at other people in my major before I graduated. I took note of, okay, how did they go about things? What marketing skills they used? What can I change? What should I keep? And from there, I realized like, okay, I need to do something outside of the general population. So with me, before I came to ECU, I was big on sports, football, basketball, track, baseball. Unfortunately, when I got to East Carolina University, I stopped playing sports, but I always kept my love for sports um, active during that time. So from there, my shift was to focus more on athletes, not only because, like I said before, I love sports, but also, A, the money's out there is crazy. You just saw uh, this dude named Patrick Mahomes, like, what, 450, 405? Oh, yeah, he got paid, for sure. Yeah. I can, I'll take a meal. We got 404 left. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not going to affect his pockets. So with that, like I said before, I uh, wanted to be working with athletes. So you might say, okay, now you work with athletes, what you going to do? My goal is to help you from an athletic standpoint. So let's say you had a son. He played basketball. Not saying he's not a good basketball player, but from an athlete standpoint, he has stuff to work on. Uh, might be explosiveness. Might be lateral movement. Might just be something simple as flexibility. From there, that person would, well, your son or you would contact me. And then we'll run certain tests to, um, to make sure that what I see is correct and what other things that I might not pick up from the initial process. And then from there, we're just working, get, getting better as an athlete so that when it's time for regular season, you will see an improvement. Not only you working on your skill, but also, like, again, your body, your body's stronger, you're moving faster. You're able to do different things you couldn't do last year. Uh, so that's, like, one of my things of that. Okay, for sure. And I like how you really focused on just mechanics, like just different techniques. You talked about explosiveness. You talked about form and things of that nature. So with these, I heard you mention test and just kind of wanting to really hone in on certain things. Are these things that you are wanting to implement just based off of kind of research, just things that you've learned? Is this kind of from your own experience? Because I know you did play basketball and different things like that. I'm sure you've gone to like a number of camps and a number of workouts. So how did you kind of just formulate your idea for really wanting to put all this together? Uh, really from, like I said, before high school, well, excuse me, before college, being in high school, I mean, excuse me, dang, <laughs> attending East Carolina University, they taught me I'll say the common knowledge for me to conduct certain tests 
But the test I'm talking about is more from an, an athletic standpoint. So at East Carolina University, we didn't have like a athlete class or something along those terms. Um, it's just, okay, what is this? Which way it goes? Good. So I took that basic information, added that with my common knowledge and my experience on um, different fields and different sports, and then just really combined them together. So the fact that I'm now accredited by East Carolina University is more of a, a more of a insurance purposes. So again, I would conduct the type of test depending on which athlete it is. I might, if it's a tennis player, I'll definitely concert, conduct a different test compared to a basketball player. You know, those two different movements, they're using two different muscles. Other than being on their feet, they focus on two two different things, two different planets in my opinion. So depending on which athlete it is, from there, we will work on, like I said, we conduct that test and then work on your weaknesses along with helping out your strength as well. I like that, man. What a plan indeed. So with with wanting to, like you said, get Rawlings SSPT started, how did you kind of put yourself out there? Like, was it all through social media? Was this word of mouth just in you knowing athletes? And is, is that how your clientele kind of came about? What was it like really? And I mean, I know you're still kind of formulating things and getting things together. So what is it like kind of in these beginning stages, really trying to get things going? Right. In these beginning stages, really, it showed that all all my hard work before I graduated really paid off. So, I mean, we, me staying in contact with my friends that are now on a professional level, me staying in contact with my friends just day-to-day -day high school, you know, me doing that along with my marketing skills allowed me to really, I'm only a month and a weekend, I have 15 clients. 14 are in Charlotte, excuse me, 12 are in Charlotte, two are in Greenville, and I have a virtual session with a lady out in Dallas, Texas as well. So really everything spread it through word of mouth after um, my first two clients, which was in Greenville. Once I came back to Charlotte, it just spread it like wildfire. So really I'll work somebody out. I'll do a good job that they'll tell their friends or their family. And then they'll contact me and say, hey, can such and such add on to, to our workouts today? I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to deny the money. You know, at the same time, I want to I want people to realize that okay you don't have to lift heavy weights to work out you don't have to work out two three hours to get a good workout in time frame would be an hour hour and a half and something short again it allows people to schedule that in their day-to-day -day activities so you won't be like oh dang i can't do this because i gotta work out today so really just taking all really everything social media marketing word of mouth business point of view school point of view, life point of view, and putting that all together and just making sure everybody is um, having a great experience with me when they conduct their workout. And then from there, it's up to them to spread it to, for them, well, excuse me, it's up to them to tell other people if they, if they would like it. If not, I will continue to do other marketing tactics. Absolutely. And I mean, I, I think just the way you're talking in general and just the way you've built things, I mean, results speak for themselves. Like you said, a month and a weekend and 15 clients. So Big shout out to you, big kudos to you, and definitely um, keep going. And who knows what what's in store even after things kind of, as they've been saying, kind of get back to normal or open back up and, and you right. can really get things going. But you even said that you were able to implement a virtual session. So I think that that's a credit to you as well and just shows the creativity, but also just shows kind of the versatility that you need when kind of trying to build your own business, kind of do trying to do your own thing out here, especially during trying times, as some may say. So with kind of the SS, SSPT and then with your your other endeavors, how do you plan to kind of mesh them if you do to to just, I guess, like you said, other marketing tactics just to continue to put yourself out there, but also show still your versatility? Right. So with my other platforms, I work, I have my hands in and really all connect with each other. So um, I also take photography. Oh, excuse me. I do photography. I also run a a high school basketball company. Um, we're reaching more out to the pros now. We have pros in our in our lineup, but like I say, it's more so a just a a high school recruiting visual page. Just off of that alone, photography, fitness, and sports. One, two, and three. You for marketing, for word of mouth, for just even to get that work in. All three of those things tied together. Um, what I plan on doing with my photography is transferring that to videography and then from there now we have actual a video platform some type of resource so that okay not only i have pictures of me lifting a weight i have also have a video of me or my client conducting a workout so that other people can not only see what i'm doing but hopefully just take few few notes and pointers and add that to their workout as well that's what i do i see y'all follow people i like what they do i'll save it i'll record it i'll 
put it on the board, see what can I fix, what can I change to uh, challenge the body a little bit more. And then from there, I apply it to my clients or I apply it to myself. Along with that, like I say, if I'm training athletes, again, and they're in high school, now I can use that, excuse me, that visual arts page, that recruiting page to say, okay, this person went to level three to level 15 on this athletic scale, or he gained three stars in the ESPN 300. Like we can really promote him. So now he's not only improving on the playing field, but now he's getting heavily recruited just because that we can reach out to a thousand, two thousand people just off that one basketball page, you know? I get that for sure. And I think that that's, I, I mean, I think that's needed, especially when, like you say, you have multiple talents out here. Why not, why not put them all out there? And so I definitely want to get in the lab with you when it comes to videography, because that's something that I mean, I went to, I mean, originally it really started in high school, like with more so with video editing. And that was really, uh, once I found Adobe Premiere Pro, I like, I almost fell in love. And then once I became certified for it, I really um, enjoyed it and used it all throughout ECU and then even at Syracuse. So definitely something that I want to start practicing more. But yeah, now that I have my camera, I've kind of been practicing more photography myself and really just trying to hone in on my skills. So never anything wrong with that, especially trying to bring everything together. So for the athletes out there, for for people kind of involved in sports in any type of way, why do you feel it's important to have a trainer? Why do you feel it's important to have some type of, of training regimen or or maybe just have a coach or or work on certain things rather than, like you said, just kind of lifting those big weights, just getting stronger? Really to have somebody push you, for example, we can, if you know you can bench 95, you go to the gym, you rep it 10 times, you might feel satisfied, but somebody can see that that potential in you or see you at a, at a greater platform or a greater position is going to push you to that point so that you will get there. It, some people, they walk into the gym, they both know the trainer and the client knows, okay, we have a goal to hit. Sometimes the client might not see it, but the trainer see it. Sometimes... Sometimes the client might come in using 45% of their efforts or their worth and then saying, all right, trainer comes in, pull the other additional remaining effort. You know what I'm saying? It, it's all different between each and every scenario. But regardless, um, it's very important to have a trainer just to have, just to have somebody push you, help you reach new goals, and have, help you reach new performance levels. Uh, you you would never know until you try. That's one thing I, I've learned. You never know until you try. So, I mean, it doesn't hurt to – have a trainer. Uh, not everybody needs a trainer, but again, it doesn't hurt to try. You never know until you try and you also can never knock it until you try. That's something that I've, I've learned and definitely have grown to appreciate it. And it makes sense. Something that you spoke about in the beginning of this was that you really wanted to stand out from the general population. So this is kind of like a two part question for you. But my first part is, OK, so what makes what makes you what you want to do what you want to bring together, what you want to offer to people, what you are currently offering to people different from the general population. And then two, at what point did you realize, okay, it's time to make this happen? At what point, I know this just wasn't something where you kind of just did it on a whim. I'm sure this is something that you thought about and had planned out, mapped out. I probably talked to people about it. At what point were you just like, okay, it's time to really put it into action and make it happen? Got you. Uh, so what's different between me and the next man up to the left of me or to the right of me Personally, just conducting as a business. Um, most people, they, like you said, do it just to say, go out on a limb. They don't really have a full purpose of it. For me, behind all this, my goal is to reach financial freedom. I believe I need more than four incomes for me to be stable. For example, a table or a chair, you have four legs. You take one leg off, it's not balanced. So I believe, any, I believe definitely what can I do to reach that five, six, seven, eight source of the income. And uh, that's really what motivated me, really. So I'll say just motivation, that's there between me and somebody else. Everybody, we all do the same thing. We all lift the same weight, that same direction. Uh, we all call it the same thing, really, just based off what you're gonna do with that information and that knowledge and how you're gonna apply it differently. Like I said, I don't think different though. Uh, actually training my clients, specifically the athletes, should just, like I said before, that specific training, working on something that's or make you better rather me again not throwing shade rather me have you go on the field put some cones out until you run this cone break down and then run to the next cone i don't yeah that's muscle memory but we can attack we can attack muscle memory and then muscle endurance and then fast twitch memory or reaction on top of that so it's just like why not do more 
You know what I'm saying? Can you repeat the second part though of the question? That you so the second part was more so okay. Like you said, you you want to bring all of this together. You've You've learned some of this, you've experienced some of this, so you attribute it to both. So now, at what point were you just like, okay, Rawlings SSPT, my photography, let's just make it happen. Like, let's just make it official, whether it be you making an Instagram page, whether it be you putting it out there publicly. Like, I know for me, I had talked to some people about the podcast. It, it low-key was unofficial and it was just a thread on Twitter. But at, basically, once I graduated from Syracuse, I was just like, okay, look, it's time to make it a go. I'm, I'm no longer making any excuses. Let's just do it. That's when I had my little brother record the announcement and I just dropped it. So at what point for you were you like, okay, let's just make it happen. Let's let's do it. I'm I'm ready to I'm ready to really brand myself. Really once I graduated, I've been prepping myself for this for two years now. Once I got into my junior year, I realized college is not forever. At the end of the day, once I leave college, I need to be able to pay some bills. So what can I do? And right now, how can I prep myself? And then when it's actually go time, these are the goals I have to check off. So really just prepping myself. Yeah, because like, at the end of the day, it's not about what he says, she says. It's about what you want to do and what you believe in. If you don't believe in it, if you don't have full passion or full effort, you're not going to see the results you want to see. At the end of the day, like I said before, it builds. That bill got your name on it, not your name and your friend's name. Nah, just your name. So it's really hitting the ground, running full speed. I don't really care what anybody thinks. I will take advice and I will apply if, if I feel like it's good advice. At the same time, I'm not here to please everybody. I'm here to please myself. I like that. I think that was a, a great point to I think that was a great point too. Just just about how look at, after a certain point you just have to stop really worrying about the outside. I saw something I can't remember it verbatim, but it was just like life changed when I stopped worrying about who wasn't and who was. And it was just like, you just look at things totally different. Like you got to look at really around. And sometimes you just don't even have to look around who is supporting. You just got to look at yourself. Look, you want this for you. At the end of the day, nobody, only person that can outwork yourself for real, for real is you. So they always say like, you are your worst critic and your biggest obstacle is that man in the mirror. So I like that mentality. I like that aspect for sure. So for someone just kind of getting started, just getting things off the ground, what would you say has been your biggest lesson thus far? Like something that really kind of pushed you to keep going, keep going, something that challenged you? My biggest lesson is to give each and everything 100% because if the client sees you giving 100%, the clients feel that you're really pushing them, that's when that word of mouth promotion starts, starts in the role. Of they say, okay, hey, I had a great workout today rather than, oh yeah, I worked out with somebody. It was okay. I swear it. And then that promotion right there is not going to go for that demographics you want to go for. So really just giving everything full effort. Each session is an hour, hour and a half, but there's no excuse for me to give somebody else an hour of my time, especially if they pay me. So really my biggest lesson is to attack everything with full effort. Don't, I don't know if I can cuss on here. Can I cuss on here? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll say this, just give 100%. Just give okay. It. Okay. If it's going to get your point across, you got to do what you got to do. But all right. So just to kind of play devil's advocate, then just to challenge that question. So in your month, in a weekend, like you said, I know at some days you just didn't feel like it. You just weren't feeling it, whether it just be one of those days, whether it just be work or you had something to do before, or maybe you didn't get enough sleep, hungry, whatever the case may be. How do you still tell yourself, hey, well, this person is paying me. I have to give my all regardless and not really slack up or or make sure that they don't get the short end of the stick. All right, really, I mean, like what you said, that person's paying me. That person can stop paying me that 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 same session after or that next week after. So just the fact that, hey, that person can stop paying you, what you going to do? You're going to give it full effort? If that person leave for a valid reason, then you have to respect it. But if it's based off of you, then you need to go to, back to the planning board and work on what you need to work on. So that's my biggest thing saying, OK, that person can stop training with you if they want to. There's other trainers out here. There's 100 trainers in Charlotte. So for sure, for sure. So now I know that things have to just be a little bit different. Well, just alone, just in hearing that you have the virtual session, I know that things are a little bit different. And I actually want to hear how that session is going for you, just because I've kind of seen those. My uh, uh, one of my profiles, I actually bought him on uh, Zay Dickens for good, better, best, never let it rest. But I know he kind of does those, too. But so. Once things kind of open up, as they say, or once restrictions get lifted or whatever the case may be, how do you plan to go about things? Well, do you plan to change anything as far as like marketing or promotion or really putting yourself out there? Because I mean, I could, one could only imagine that your clientele will grow once people really start to get back to moving into everyday life. 
Right. Once things started opening back up, really just applying that same pressure. Like like we both said, I got 15 clients in a month and a week. There's a reason why I got 15 clients within a month and a week. I need to make sure I keep on doing the same thing I'm doing. Uh, anything changes really just the location of where I work, my clients at a, out at. Most of the time I go to their house. I plan on having them coming to a gym. I haven't decided either a YMCA that I work at or some other gym uh, that I know through other people, really just depending on what the clients prefer. The reason I'm saying that is because there's more more things to do. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I provide equipment for my clients, but at the same time, I can't walk around with a with a rack. You know, um, I need to go somewhere with a rack. I need to go somewhere with a, a machines or just, just the fact that I can have access to multiple free weights or different equipment. Um, that's one thing I plan on changing, but at the same time, once I change that location, we're going to get even more work in. We're going to see better results. So really, I'm just looking forward to everything going back to normal. Yeah, really. That's my that's my that's my answer to that question. <laughs> You're definitely not the only one. And I know some people out there listening are probably saying the same thing. It just gets it's exhausting after a while just hearing the same things, hearing different things, reading the same things, reading different things. It's just like nobody knows what to do at this point. You think you moving forward just to take some steps back. And so it gets crazy. So all right, but I, nonetheless, I definitely do understand that. I'm wishing you the best of luck. I, like I said, big congrats to you now, just in, in the short amount of time that you've been kind of getting it started and, and everything like that. Because I remember when you were posting it on Instagram on your story to follow it and everything when I first came across it. And so now just to see that the progress is made, just the, the videos, the promotion, the word of mouth. And, and I mean, the clientele speaking for itself. I, I like it, bro. I like it a lot. So really just keep doing what you're doing. So now is this something that you, is this something that you just want to keep like strictly to Charlotte? Like, is this unique to Charlotte or is this something that you kind of want to build? Do you want to relocate? Do you have plans to like eventually turn this into like your own facilities type things? What is, what are kind of you thinking for long-term goals? Right. Long-term, I do want to open up, well, construct and open up my own sports performance center. Um, I want a big, large amount of land, throw some turf on there, throw some weights in there, huge building, high tech technology, high tech technology. But <laughs> everything really um that's one of my main goals and then i'm not just in north carolina again i offer i offer virtual sessions so that like for example i have a client in, in dallas texas that's not saying my limit is dallas texas so people in cali oregon kansas new york all in every each and every state um I'm, I'm down for it um there's no reason it, especially with virtual sessions um there's really no excuse for that for that but yeah my my main goal one of my top goals is to open my own sports performance center and then just run it without being there. I'll be there from time to time, but just be able to have it up and running. That's that would be my goal. Also, 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 uh, take a high school athlete and train him up to the pros. That's that's one of my other goals as well. So right now I have a few Division One athletes I work with, and then I also have some special projects with people who just try to make varsity team. Hey, if all three or four of those kids can make make to the pros. That's great for me and them, their family, and my family. But at the same time, we got to get there. So um, that's definitely one of my, I guess, short-term goals. If you're looking like more three, two years, uh, having somebody playing professional ball in whatever sport they're playing. Okay. I like that. I'm I'm going to mark that one down. So episode 14, you heard it here first. He, he's training an athlete to the pro. So I'm looking forward to it and I'm excited to see that for sure. And just this whole time you were just talking and even before this episode, somebody who, and I mean, I think this goes without saying because we do talk, but somebody who I really want to see you partner with is Dre, just because this is what he talked about just in him, watching him study health and human performance at ECU. And then now going on to see what he's doing. And Raleigh is just like, wow, like, yeah, Dre is doing the thing. And I think y'all two together, just from the, the pool that y'all have and just the clientele and just the work ethic and just really the, the vision for it and the, the knowledge about it and everything, y'all together, y'all would be, that's a dynamic duo right there. So Dre, if you're out there listening, I already know, like I said, we always talk and check in with each other, but it's definitely something that moving forward, we can really start to to get off the ground, to get going. However, we can help and, and get it out there. Let's do it for sure. Yeah. So, um, also, I'm going to throw in one more goal, one more quick goal. Uh, I guess short term as well, I want to conduct my own sports camp. So, right now, I stated before, I played sports in high school. All my friends were like Division One or Pro. And like, out of all my friends, I'm the one who didn't play Division One or Pro ball. So, I feel like I'm like 
the worst out of the group, but really they can all get the work still. But yeah, I've contacted all of them. They all down for it. It's gonna be based in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, really is just waiting out what happens with this virus and stuff like that. And then from there, we just hit the ground rolling with planning. I've been planning for maybe two, three weeks now. I'm just waiting on what Corona want to do first and foremost. Um, but that's also a goal as well. So, so conduct my own sports camp. All definitely possible, bro. And it's 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 only a matter of time before you already spoke it. So it's already done, and I'm I'm excited to see it. I'm excited that other people are are just excited because they're they're with the vision they're ready to help out in any way and that's really just what you need when you have those like-minded people around you bro really the the sky's the limit so just before we wrap things up is there anything that you kind of want to add anything that you're looking forward to any just any client experiences that you have or, or just something that you think maybe we didn't touch on that you just want people to know about what you do whether it be on the fitness side photography whatever the case may be i can give a few shout outs so yes go ahead Follow Kingdom Capital Logistics on Facebook and Instagram. That is a logistics company. We started out in Charlotte, North Carolina. We will be across the whole country very, very soon. So look out for that. Um, also, follow my photography page on Instagram, Rawlings underscore visuals. Also, follow my fitness page, Rawlings underscore SSPT. Um, any high school sports, any mixtapes and stuff like that, you can contact Exposed Mixtapes. So XP. O S E underscore mixtapes. If you need a nice suit, you need some nice dress clothes, tap in with Ola Customs. Uh, Instagram is at symbol O L A Customs, one word. And then also tap into um to, to your podcast. You got to down down the business. You got to. You got to. Why not? Uh, if you if you haven't listened to it yet, you're missing out at each and every time. It's amazing. I personally have been busy, but when I tap in and listen to it, it really be a like, very very nice conversation with with your people i really don't know how you know all these people but at the same time i mean it's you so i mean it, it's amazing man keep on doing you don't know what this can turn out to i personally i'm taking notes from you because i'm looking to start some type of podcast as well so everything you do just know somebody watching you so again it's happening down to business podcast learn something read a book wash your hands wear a mask that's all I got to say, really. I didn't even want to hop back on the mic. This man then gave the, the intro, the outro, the epilogue, the, the prelogue. It's just, <laughs> hey, I'm, I might put one of these on my on my advertiser. I might have to switch up my, my opening and my closing music in here. But no, definitely, I do echo everything Jordan said and all of those people who he named and, and, and a host of others who I hope to someday bring on this podcast and really just keep this thing going. And I really do appreciate the words, bro. And always here to help anything that I can do, whether it be to aspire, inspire, or whatever i'm definitely always for it and even like i spoke at the beginning of this just it's just been amazing just to watch the growth watch you come in um and just see where you are now and, and really just see the vision and really just see you working i can really say that for a lot of people especially a lot of people close to me so definitely appreciate you coming on the podcast definitely gonna drop all the information when i drop the bio so that everybody can get all get all of that excuse me and continue to tap in like i said i appreciate everybody for all the love 1k was amazing but now it's the road to 10k i was talking to a couple of friends and they said let's get you to 10k so I'm really hyped for that really happy so let's get it man like i said hopefully by the time you're hearing this episode it's another big announcement coming so once again thank you jordan for joining me thank you everybody out there listening this has been a down to business podcast with tomorrow turner